this is it. The final VASA 101 lesson. Well, at least the final uh, basic course lesson. I'll do some more advanced topics after I cap off these 11 lessons with uh, this one, which is uh, connecting to the server. Now that you've learned all the basics, learn how to set things up, pull your order of battle, etc. Now it's time to play, or at least play with another person. Um, up to this point, up to le lesson 11, you should be able to play solo. Um, connecting to the server is very easy, so let's fire up Vassal. There's two ways to connect to the server, um, and I'll show you each one uh, real quickly. So let's run Vassal. Um, you don't need to, we won't need to load a scenario for this. Let's just fire up Vassal and uh, jump into the online area. So um, firing up Vassal, you get this dialogue. You can start a new game offline, which basically starts you with a blank template that you can start building things. Look for a game online, which is what we're going to do. And then you can load a previous save game. So let's just do, if you click here, go look for a game online. It's not going to load any scenario. It's not even going to give you an option to load a scenario as if you picked load a save game. It's basically going to fire up Vassal and connect you um, to their server so you can connect with a buddy or maybe even try to find a pickup game with somebody. So let's go ahead and hit uh, finish. And you can see right over on the right here, it automatically connected me. Uh, all the rooms with all the games are displayed over here. Um, now, before doing this, you might have to configure, if, if it doesn't load um, into the server automatically, you may be missing your uh, information. So go to Preferences and go to, to server uh oh no that's not it uh where is it it's where you enter oh here it is personal so uh put a name it can be your real name just your first name a made up name something that people can either know who you are or identify you later on when they're trying to connect with you and give a password. Uh, I've never been prompted for a password. I just entered a password. So you need a name and password. You shouldn't, you won't be prompted for a password when you connect to the server, but without at least a name, I'm not sure if it'll automatically kick you into the server. If you launch Vassal the way I showed you from look, um, picking the look for a game online option. Okay. Now, if you happen to come in, um, loading it that way, um, and it looks like this, there's no server information. Go in, set your name and password, and then try to connect to the server. If you don't see this, these panes over on the right, these window panes, the ser <clears throat> server information, it may look like this. You see nothing at all. <clears throat> if you don't, you need to display the server window. And that's what this uh, little window here says, show hide the server console or server controls. So click these two arrows and then you'll see the, the server controls over here. Now what you want to do is you want to hit connect. Well, first you want to make sure you're connecting to the Vassal legacy server. The first time you run it, it should be default. If you right click on that, it'll give you different options. As far as I know, none of these work. I wish peer-to-peer um, -peer worked because it could bypass a lot of the problems with the Vassal server going down, but I've never been able to get it to work. I've fiddled around with Jabber server. I have no idea if that works. I've got nothing to work. So make sure you Vassal legacy server is picked. It'll have the V icon here. And then hit connect after you've filled in your name and password. And it'll put you in the Vassal server. Uh, looks like there's about maybe 25 games going on. Um, Matchups or people playing solo. Um, the number in parentheses is the number of people in that room. And then over here, um, I'm, we're in the main room, me and uh, Benjamin Steinberg, which I recognize his name from the Facebook group. Now, if you want to join a room, 
um, if there's a lock on it, that means the whoever created the room has locked it, so you can't get in. You have to ask permission to get in, and, and you can you can probably yeah you can send someone a message by right clicking on their name and send private message. I won't bother this guy, but let's just pop into a room here. Um, let's go into uh, this looks interesting. Let's go into the comp group Piper uh, prayers day. No, that's just one guy. Let's go into a game. Here we go. Hatton and Flames. Let's jump in there. Damon and Terry. I think I recognize Terry Gray's name as well. So just right click on that and hit join room. And what it's doing is it's load. Damon owns the room. He's running the session. It loads his information. Um, and you're into the game. Now, this is very important. Etiquette dictates you are not a player. Don't touch anything. Just observe because vassal does not have permission controls i could come in here and highlight all these counters and delete them move them i could start making dice rolls don't do anything don't start fiddling with people's uh, play surfaces and dice rolls just observe i just take my hand off the mouse unless i want to scroll around and look at things but uh, make sure you don't enter wow look at this maybe they're setting up i'm not sure <laughs> that's interesting formation they must be setting up yeah, so don't don't mess with anyone's stuff. Just uh, observe. Now, if you want to leave a room that you're in, you basically have to click on the main room and rejoin that. Uh, don't save the. I don't want to save their game. You can save the game locally if you want because it's synchronized from them. Uh, I'd never do. Um, there's no game going on in the main room. It's just a lobby, so it unloaded that. Now, if we wanted to start our own room, what you do is you <clears throat> just type in, uh, I'll just type in test room, or no, let me type in Eastern Gate. That's what we've been using for our example. Uh, just hit enter, and now there's a room. It puts usually puts it at the bottom, or always puts it at the bottom, and there's just me in there right now. Now, if someone, if I had a map loaded and a game loaded, if someone joined this room, it would send my map information to them. And over here it would say synchronizing something. Maybe it said this above. Uh, yeah, synchronizing complete. So when I joined that Hatton room, it synchronized all the info, information. Now you see there, are, there may be some cases where you look at a scenario and it won't load things correctly because Maybe maybe run maybe running a map you don't have, um, or extensions you don't have, things like that. Um, so it's a little hit and miss if you join game games that are in progress to watch. You may not see everything that they're seeing. Now, if you want to lock a room and keep people from coming in and either watching or potentially messing with your board, which it happens sometimes. It's pretty infrequent. I've never had it happen, but I've heard. You just right-click on your room, or pick it, and right-click and hit lock room, and you're locked down. Nobody can join the room. So if someone's trying to join the room like your buddy and you can't get in, make sure you unlock it, and then he can come in. And as soon as he comes in, it'll synchronize your information to him. Or if you go into his room and he has the game loaded, it'll send his game, game information to you. Now, if you let's uh, let's rejoin this Hatton game real quick. Let's rejoin that. It'll resynchronize. There we go. Now, if something gets out of whack, the server goes down or something, and you need to refresh the information on the screen, screen, the person in bold is the one who's kind of running the session. If you right-click on their name, you can hit synchronize, and it'll send the most his most current um setup positions etc on his end on his client it'll send it to your vassal client and it'll update it that way looks like they're rolling for something here so that's basically it um there are some messaging messaging options here it's not i've never had anyone send me a message actually um, you can mark uh, mark information here like away from keyboard looking for for a game um Display server connections for all modules. That's interesting. Oh, okay. This is for, so this is the Vassal, uh, not Virtual Advanced Squad Leader, but Vassal, the game engine. 
and all the things that are being run on it, it looks like right now. Vassal Virtual Advanced Squad Leader looks like it's almost always the most popular. There are 39 connections in there right now. Yeah. Vassal Virtual Advanced Squad Leader is usually very popular relative to some of the other things. Um, now, if you want to disconnect, you know, make sure you save your game. If you want to save someone else's game and they, you synchronize from them, you can do that. Like, like if I hit, went up here and went file, save game, it's not interfering with our game. It's just saving their game locally onto your drive. And you can look at it later. Or, or if you and a buddy are playing a real game between yourselves, you can each save a copy um, onto your machines as backup or to look at them later to strategize. But if you're done, if you're done playing and you want to disconnect from the server, just hit this key, this button right here, disconnect. Uh, let me I jump up to the main room first. Uh, don't want to save the game and just disconnect from the server and you're disconnected. So once you've entered your name and pas password under file preferences um, and you want to connect and disconnect from the server, you just use that to connect. Join rooms, play, do your thing, and then hit this to disconnect. And you can close Vassal once you're done playing. And that's it. You're ready to roll. You're ready to set everything up in Vassal, connect to the server, start playing games with your buddies or pick up games or people on Facebook or the Discord channel, what have you. So that's it. That's it for the basic, uh, I guess there's 12, 12 lessons, um, including the 5A lesson, Advanced Overlays, but this is number 11. That's the 12 lesson Vassal basic course. Uh, next up, I'm going to start doing some advanced lessons. The first two I think I'm going to do, I'm calling the, I'm going to call them beautifying your scenarios one and two or blinging your scenarios one and two, something like that. And the first one is going to be um, how to use the ASL templates program, um, which I've used several times to set up some of my scenarios. Um, once you figure that out and you learn how to cut and paste things into uh, draggable lab labels on your board, you can create all kinds of cool, interesting informational uh, items on your map. And then, then draggable overlays, which I touched on briefly in probably lesson 5 or 5A. I'm going to go into more detail on how to use the stuff in draggable overlays to make your playing surface stand out a little better or provide more information while you're playing. So uh, that's it for this lesson. That's it for the basic course. And I'll see you in the advanced lessons uh, probably in a few days or in a week whenever I get to it. So Rolo.